Today, if you are in the child care profession, it is very likely that you are responsible for taking care of children who have asthma. Asthma in the United States has become one of the most serious chronic childhood diseases, affecting more than 5 million children. In fact, asthma has become so common that the average child care program is likely to include one or more children with asthma. And while asthma can be managed, it is a serious illness that can be fatal if not properly treated. This video presentation will provide you with an overview of what you, as a child care provider, can do to recognize when a child in your care is having an asthma attack and how to effectively provide treatment to that child. First, we'll discuss what asthma is and how it can be controlled. Next, we'll look at some common medications and medical devices that the children under your care may need to use. And lastly, we'll see how these devices need to be cleaned to prevent infection and make sure they are available when needed. For more detailed information, please refer to the asthma curriculum accompanying this video. Let's get started by defining asthma. Asthma is a chronic inflammatory disorder of the airways. Children with asthma have attacks of coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath. These symptoms are caused when the airways in the lungs become inflamed, filled with mucus, making breathing difficult. What triggers or provokes these attacks is different from child to child and may include, but not be limited to, exposure to smoke, allergies to animals, dust or mold, allergies to food, indoor and outdoor air pollutants, weather conditions, and exercise. In addition, many asthma attacks occur when children get respiratory infections, including the common cold. The first step is to identify any child in your care who is known to have asthma. The second step is to make sure you keep your child care home or facility as free as possible of allergens. Be sure to schedule periodic checks and cleaning of your home or facility to reduce triggers. Children with asthma often take medications to relax their air passages or prevent them from becoming inflamed. These medications may need to be administered every day or only during attacks. Asthma medication is available in many forms, including pill, liquid, or powder, and can be given using either an inhaler or with the combination of an air compressor and a nebulizer. Before we discuss these medications and how they are given in detail, let's see what an asthma attack looks like. Every child with asthma has a built-in early warning system that signals when symptoms are on the way. These signals can be seen, heard, and felt. Every child has his own pattern of signals, but caregivers can learn how to recognize the specific patterns and head off those symptoms before they get worse. Here is what to look for. Coughing, wheezing, difficult breathing, and a tight feeling in the chest. In addition, look for unusual paleness, vomiting, or hunched over body posture, indicating that the child cannot stand or sit straight and cannot relax. If you observe any of these symptoms, you will first need to reassure the child that you will help him or her immediately. Remember, tone of voice, attitude, and body language will help calm or excite the child. The child will take his cues from you. So while you may show concern, remain calm and encourage the child to relax and stay calm. Anxiety will only increase the breathing rate and make matters worse. Stay with the child and if the doctor has recommended a rescue medication when symptoms appear, administer it immediately. Then bring the child to a quiet place out of the cold or heat. A child who has had an asthma attack should keep his level of activity low following the attack. Provide a quiet activity for the child to participate in under close supervision. Lastly, if you can find out what triggered the symptoms, remove it or the child from the immediate area. If a child in your care exhibits asthma symptoms and does not have rescue medication, call 911 immediately. If a child has rescue medication prescribed to him, then the child's parent or guardian must provide the rescue medication to the child care facility so that it can be available at all times the child is present. It is important to keep track of the expiration date of the rescue medication in order to have the medication that will be effective in an emergency. Each time a child is medicated for his asthma, this information should be logged in a report. The dosage of each medication and how and why it was given should be recorded along with the time and date and who administered the medication. Any side effects or outcome 
should be recorded as well. Be sure to inform the parent or guardian that the child had an asthma attack and when, what, and how much medication was given. Hopefully these steps will take care of the situation, but you will need to call 911 if the coughing, wheezing, or shortness of breath gets worse after the rescue medication has been given and has had time to work. Signs that the child may not be improving are the child may have trouble talking or walking, and as less and less oxygen gets into his bloodstream, his lips or fingernails may turn blue or gray, and the child may pass out. For these symptoms, call 911 immediately and provide emergency first aid as appropriate for respiratory distress. As soon as you can, call or have another responsible adult call the child's parents to let them know that 911 has been called. When 911 comes, be sure to give them the child's medical record. Because asthma can be controlled if treated appropriately, it's important to know in advance what the child's specific asthma action plan includes. Remember that each plan will be different because each child with asthma will probably have different triggers and different treatments or medications. Whenever a child joins your center, take a few minutes to familiarize yourself with their equipment and medication. At this time, you will need to prepare an asthma action plan. The asthma action plan should list any activities or conditions likely to trigger an asthma attack. Medications being taken regularly, medications which should be administered in case of an attack, and the steps to be taken if the child has a serious attack that cannot be controlled by his rescue medication. Key phone numbers should also be included. Keep in mind that asthma can be controlled and that children with asthma can lead a normal life. As we discussed earlier, keeping allergens away from a child's environment is important. However, many children with asthma will require medication. Asthma medications fall into three main categories. The first, known as controller medication, helps reduce inflammation of the air passages and keeps the airways from reacting to asthma triggers. These medications are usually taken daily and will not relieve breathing difficulties during an asthma attack. To work well, they must be taken regularly. The second type of medication is known as rescue reliever medication or rescue bronchodilators. These medications are the ones to use when a child is having breathing difficulties during an asthma attack. These rescue medications are used to reduce the inflammation of the air passages quickly so that the child can breathe more easily. The third category is known as long-term reliever medication or long-acting bronchodilators. These types of medications are not rescue medications and will not work quickly during an asthma attack. Rather, they work over an extended period of time, usually 6 to 12 hours, to keep the airways open. Another important point to make is the proper storage of all medications. Store inhalers and liquid nebulizer medication at room temperature. These types of medications should not be refrigerated. Doing so can make the medication unstable. If these medications must be transported away from the child care home or facility due to field trips, care must be taken to keep them at room temperature. Be careful not to leave these types of medications in the car. Extreme temperatures can cause the medication to become ineffective. Controller, rescue reliever, and long-term reliever medication come in different forms including liquid, powder, or pill in order to meet the needs of different children. If you have children with asthma in your care, you will probably need to help them administer various types of asthma medication, so you will need to know how all the asthma medications and equipment work. Let's talk about the nebulizer first. The air compressor, sometimes called the machine, pushes air through the tubing connected to the nebulizer, which then turns liquid medication into a mist so they can be inhaled. Sometimes the medication comes pre-mixed, or other times it must be diluted with saline solution. To use the nebulizer, start by washing your hands thoroughly with warm water and soap. Now fasten the mouthpiece to the T-shaped part and fasten this unit to the cup. Fasten the reservoir tube to the opposite end of the T-shaped part. Attach one end of the tubing to the nebulizer cup and attach the other end of the tubing to the compressor. Measure the medication and the saline solution into the nebulizer cup. If the child has been prescribed pre-measured and pre-mixed medication, put it into the nebulizer as directed. Screw the cap on the nebulizer shut. Gently swirl the nebulizer cup to mix the solution. Lastly, plug it in, turn the compressor on, 
and make sure it is working by looking for a steady mist coming from the nebulizer. All you need to do now is put the mouthpiece to the child's mouth. If the mist is not coming out of the nebulizer mouthpiece or mask, check to make sure that the machine's filter cap is screwed on tightly or is properly secured. Also, make sure that the machine's intake area and the back or side of the machine is not blocked. Younger children under the age of five may prefer using a mask instead of the nebulizer T-shaped mouthpiece. In either case, it is important that the T-shaped mouthpiece or mask be on securely to ensure maximum inhalation. For children using the regular T-shaped mouthpiece, they should take slow, deep breaths as the breathing treatment begins. Then they should breathe normally through their mouth. For children using the mask, they can breathe normally through their nose or mouth throughout the entire treatment. A little bit of coughing is to be expected during the nebulizer treatment. You do not have to stop the treatment if the child is mildly coughing. The medication should take approximately 10 minutes to administer. Toward the end of the treatment, as the medicine begins to disappear, there may be some medicine left in the nebulizer cup, even though the nebulizer has stopped misting. To utilize the remaining medication for this treatment, gently flick the cup with your finger. This will help the remaining medication become a mist. When the nebulizer stops misting, you can turn off the compressor. Wash your hands thoroughly with warm water and soap after administering the nebulizer treatment. As you've seen, using nebulizers regularly is easy. It just takes some time and planning. By making it a part of a child's regular routine, you will help him control his asthma. Now let's turn our attention to the other device for delivering medication, the inhaler. The inhaler delivers medication in an aerosol or powder form. By taking one to four puffs, different dosages are administered. To use this type of inhaler, you should have a tool called a spacer. A spacer is a device that is attached to this type of inhaler and holds the medication in its chamber long enough for the child to inhale it in one to two breaths. If a spacer is not used, then much of the medication may end up on the child's tongue, on the back of his throat, or in the air. Using the spacer or holding chamber will help get the medication into the child's lungs. Using the spacer with an inhaler is quite easy. Remove the cap from the inhaler, shake the inhaler, and fit it into the opening of the spacer opposite the mouthpiece. Once the inhaler is placed in the spacer, tell the child to breathe out slowly, then to hold her breath. Now place the mouthpiece of the spacer into her mouth. The child's mouth should be closed tightly around the mouthpiece so that no medication escapes. Then, press down on the inhaler button. This will put one puff of the medication into the spacer holding chamber. Have the child breathe in slowly for three to five seconds, and then have her hold her breath for 10 seconds to allow the medication to reach deeply into the lungs. Additional puffs may be required as directed by the doctor. If two puffs are prescribed, wait one minute between puffs and repeat the steps. Waiting one minute between puffs allows the second puff to reach more deeply into the child's lungs. Just like on the nebulizer, a mask can replace a mouthpiece on an inhaler to administer the medication to younger children. Follow the instructions for attaching the mask that come with the spacer. With powder form inhalers, spacers are not used. Their mechanisms work by clicking or pressing the inhaler button and inhaling with the mouth over the inhaler opening, which allows the child to breathe in the medication. Another device you will need to know how to use is a peak flow meter. A peak flow meter is used by people with lung disease to measure lung function. Specifically, peak flow meters measure how well a person can move air through the airways of their lungs. Peak flow meters are used both by people who use nebulizers and inhalers. A child's peak flow should be measured daily in the morning when he wakes up. The measurement should be logged in a record booklet specific for peak flow readings. Additional peak flow readings may be necessary throughout the day if a child is having a particularly symptomatic day. You may be asking yourself if these medications have side effects and which ones are normal and which ones aren't. Depending on the medication, some of the more common side effects may include headache, hand tremors, a feeling of anxiety, shakiness, stomach ache, or tiredness. Other more serious side effects may occur in some children. If you are unsure, 
or concerned about the child's reaction to any medication, call 911 immediately and then contact the child's parents or guardian. Cleaning the delivery devices daily is critical because cleaning gets rid of germs and prevents infections. Also, it minimizes dust, mold, pollen, and dust mites that often trigger asthma attacks. While the parents or guardians will be responsible for major cleaning of both the nebulizer and the inhaler, you will need to clean the nebulizer after each use and the spacer used with the inhaler once a day. To clean the nebulizer, start by washing your hands. Next, take the nebulizer apart. Put the tubing aside because it will not need to be washed. Now, rinse the other parts of the nebulizer, including the mask or mouthpiece, the T-shaped part, and the cup under warm running water for 30 seconds. Shake off the excess water and place the nebulizer parts on a clean cloth or paper towel to air dry. When the parts are dry, reassemble the nebulizer and let it run for 10 to 20 seconds to make sure the nebulizer is completely dry. Then, store as usual until the next time you need to use it. To clean the spacer at the end of the day, remove the rubber seal in which the inhaler is placed. Rinse both the inside of the spacer and the rubber seal in warm water. Let air dry before the next use. These cleanings are quick, but will keep the equipment clean and ready for use. By following the steps outlined in each child's asthma action plan, you can dramatically reduce the number of severe asthma attacks that occur to children in your care. Administering medication on time and properly can make a big difference. As always, when in doubt, ask the child's parent or guardian for information regarding the child's illness and medications. In addition, there are numerous resources listed in the curriculum that can provide you with information regarding asthma. One of the most important responsibilities for child care providers is ensuring the safety of children under their care. The State of California's Emergency Medical Services Authority is a state agency responsible for setting the standards for child care training and preventive health and safety, first aid, and cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Thank you for watching.